Podcast 253, the Drunk Dark Quack Cars video. I'm Ozone Ocean, the gay Canadian hippie. Hello, I am a Canadian hippie. This is how Canadians dress. Isn't that Baines? Is that right? That's pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Take off, you hosier. Eh? <laughs> okay, so this, this week we're talking about um, <laughs> narrative order, eh? Is that right? Bravo. Bravo, you're here. Bravo that, is in that, this That's, that's right, yes. Yes, so I'm here on the International Space Station, yes. Because I blasted off, so. Yeah, I'm Captain in orbit. Chris Hardwick. Too much chili. Too much chili, eh? Yeah, I think that was it, too, yes. Tell us Definitely. about narrative order, eh? Oh, narrative order, it's, it's when, like, you... It's like when you take all your chapter headings and you put them in a hat and then you pull them out and random randomly. Is it really? Can you ex- can you expound on that, eh? <laughs> well, you you can you can um, it, it's like starting at the climax and then going back from the climax to explain how the characters got there. Or you could, or it could be like uh, you start with a dead body. And then the whole rest of the movie is telling how the person came to be killed. Oh my god, eh? That sounds pretty freaky. Baines, what's your take on narrative order out of order? I think it works really well sometimes, especially that specific one that you're talking about. There are a few examples I can think of where it kind of jumps, where a a movie or a story will jump all over the place. It'll be the future, the the you know, it'll be the middle, the beginning, the end, something in between, and it kind of goes all back and forth. Um, Christopher Nolan's first movie was called Following. It's kind of a tells a film noir story, and it jumps all over. It's very difficult to to understand when you're first watching it, and it kind of all makes sense at the end. But it's like a big puzzle. It's all broken up. Um, I think the what Bravo's talking about works. It can work well to sort of have an exciting scene at the beginning where you don't really know what's going on. It doesn't spoil anything, but it's like, oh, this is where we're heading. We're heading to this big crisis moment or something, or this like inescapable situation. And then you go back to get to that point. I I, I hate to see it overused, but I, I do think it works. So, Pitt, what do you think? Ah. Eh? He stole mine. That's why I ah. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Oh, I think yeah. it's... Um... I think it, <laughs> what I was it, gonna say, see? it basically like basically I, I agree like it it could be easy to kind of screw it up but at the same time sometimes it works I think I think it works well and this is just generally speaking the most is like a is like if you go in, a, in an experimental way with it like you're using it actively for something or as part of a means of storytelling it doesn't mean this, it'll work well but I, I like experimental stuff like that it's kind of neat or if uh, like when we were talking about Indiana Jones and stuff like if you use it like if your opening scene wouldn't have been that gripping like you're you, you have to start with a different opening scene right like not Indy teaching in, in a classroom but instead he's being chased by a giant rolling ball as you were talking about but otherwise like if you're just using it as like any overused uh, trope then it becomes lackluster. Like, you know, it's when, when you yeah. see it 20 million times that you, you have to do it for some reason, not just have it just because. That's, that's a good point, eh? Yeah. When you uh, keep on using the same thing over and over. Bravo. What do you reckon about that? Oh, that definitely. Well, repetition, <laughs> repetition is never good especially when you see series after series where it's like you start at the you start at the climax of the story and then the whole rest of the story is just referring back to the climax until they actually get to the climax of the story and then it's like oh wow I've already seen this a dozen times and this is supposed to be the ending and like huh okay that was <laughs> that was very unfulfilling <laughs> Thanks for spoiling it, asshole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. like, oh, okay, get me. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I thought is, there's nothing after that. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you know, I mean, start start at a minor climax, not the climax. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Enemy does that well, I think. Enemy does goes for a minor climax. They try to get give you a preview of the action and then go from there. They give you a run up to it. I can't keep this fucking accent and try and make sense at the same time. <laughs> it's just not working. Yeah. Anime like, yeah. gives you a preview of what's going to happen and then they just go back from there and back again. But that's over, overused in anime. Overused. Like Pitt was saying. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. That, well, so, like some, Sergeant like Slaughter was saying. Sergeant Super Slaughter. Super Prime, motherfucker. <laughs> Sergeant, Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Sharpie. Steers and queers, boy. Steers and queers. Only two things come from Texas. <laughs> Steers and queers, and you ain't got no horns. <laughs> Oh, I do. I remember right saying right on the um, the the long version of the Quackcast that what I I like the device. I don't see it all the time anymore. I don't watch a ton of stuff anymore. But where the entire story is kind of a story that someone is telling, not in that you know cor corny way of like oh everything was a lie or something, but where someone walks, like, someone's with their friends and they say, oh man, you you look rough. Like uh, what happened? Like oh you wouldn't believe the the week I had or something like that, and then they then it cuts back and tells the entire story. But the the sort of preamble is an epilogue that has nothing to do with the story. I don't know why that should work, but I've seen like it sitcoms does, especially with it. Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore. I thought that's what I've heard that Dick Van Dyke did it a lot, and it kind of I've yeah, seen other shows do it. It would be like Dick Van Dyke would would come in to uh, you know to home, and there'd be Mary Tyler Moore, and he'd go, "Oh, I, you can't believe the, the day I had," and she'd be like, "Oh, tell me about it, tell me about it, or tell me about it, Rob." And then you go back in more Amsterdam with his figure in it. Can you tell I watched entirely too many episodes of Dick Van Dyke when I was a kid? I can. I, I just know, I've heard people, other writers say that that show did it a lot. I've never even seen the show. Mary Poppins! That's how I know Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> and every, oh, no. ev every single episode of How I Met Your Mother was in that format. Hmm. Was but the, you mean the whole series? Oh yeah, that's no, that's right. Every episode did. Like, this was the situation. Yeah, went backwards and forwards uh, and backwards. Right, yeah. Backwards. Exactly. yeah. It's yeah. based on that premise. I don't know why that works, but I, it, for some reason that always seems to work. The series was based on that premise, was that, you know, starting yes, at the we'll end, see. which was the yeah. children, and then going back and working out who the mother was, which was plays very much... Ah. Cause this is Bravo's idea. I hope you guys know this, anyone who's watching this. The, the 12 people that watch the Quack House. <laughs> <laughs> this is all Bravo's. I got up there. That person All that 12 of you, we're going to get you into a That's room and have nice. lunch. <laughs> <laughs> How I Met Your Mother, that is classic. What it, you, Has anybody seen that? Baines, you've seen no. it. I've seen some of it, yeah. Peter, have you seen it? Some. Some. Bravo. Some. Remember, I have this <laughs> Alison Hannigan uh, thing. So. We can all relate. We have one thing in common that we can, we can all... all Four, four of us, five. That four of barely... us can relate to how I met your mother. There we are. We can all, all um, relate over Doogie Hauser, the greatest actor in the world. For those of you in West Bumfuck, that's Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're talking about narratives out of order. So let, let's have a conclusion of that. Is it, is it a good thing? Is it a good technique to use in a story? What is it good for? Why would Only you if you're not it? Tarantino. <laughs> if you're not Tarantino. Well, what yeah, that's it? another thing. We talked about Kill Bill, how uh, in Kill Bill 2, she has a, a very serious situation she gets into. I don't want to spoil anything in case anyone hasn't seen it. But uh, she gets in a very difficult situation, kind of seems unescapable. And then you see a flashback of an extended flashback it jumps back in time to before the entire movie 
started to um, show kind of why she actually has the skills to escape the situation she's in. But the flashback like shows a lot of other things as well, like kind of important things to the story. That's interesting. I like that. Um, I thought it worked great. Like it's kind of weird because on paper, like you, I remember thinking at the time, like on paper, you this maybe shouldn't work, but it worked really well. Yeah, it's That's almost like more of like a story within a story type thing, which I guess yeah. flashbacks generally are. But like it was it was its own contained piece. Like like it could have not hooked up to anything at all, and like I don't know, I liked it. It was interesting. I loved it. I, I got excited. I, I remember the first time seeing power. it. Like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. And uh, and again, it had it was important to the story going forward too. So it wasn't just a flashback of oh she knows how to do this thing. It was, there was way more to it. Um, it was her the sequence with her training with um, Pai Mei. So uh, right, yeah, it can right. work. I could see it definitely see it not working in less capable hands all right so i do a flashback okay <laughs> i start here okay and then i cut back to the past all you right got, are you doing it, it doesn't matter thing, because uh because all right because uh it's uh it's important to the rest yes i am doing the nose thing of course <laughs> you want me to do the nose thing i have to do the nose thing now i'll have to catch right i'll okay. have to actually watch kill bill i've never seen it Yes. So it's conclusions. Really we have reached eleven minutes. I don't want to kill my computer with recording three hundred yeah, yeah. megabytes of video. The bad yes. guy, Kill Bill, in there is really good. He's played by that one guy, David yeah, Carradine. Yeah. David yeah. Kung Fu Carradine. Ho oh. ho. Right. Awesome actor. That's right. The man, the man who died by asphyxiation because he was doing dangerous. Because he was with... pulling the penis. That's right. That's right. I, I think that's a perfect way to end this by talking about by pulling the penis. <laughs> Synchronize. Let's all pull the penis together. And don't Four you wish car. people you could go Four back car. before you heard this? All you right. Go so back this is to the beginning. beginning. Yeah. Podcast two hundred fifty three, and the secret conclusion is pulling the penis. More cock for everybody. <laughs> Okay, thanks guys. Thanks you Pit. Thank you Bravo. Thank you Bane.